Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, first of three videos, uh, what I did is I've, I've got to do a piece with somebody all about wines that be nice in spring, maybe with spring lamb, served on the ever so slightly chilly side, not like four years in the fridge or anything like that, but just something that, um, yeah, doesn't mind half an hour in there. So. I've got 13 wines to go out, uh, and these are the first five. I have to say, we've got a, uh, how many countries have we got? We've got, uh, uh, we've got enough countries, we've got four countries, um, all Europe, and, uh, well, let's just dig in. First one I have uh, is Ponte del Diavolo Refosco uh, from Friuli, uh, 2011 vintage, weighing in at 12.5%. Uh, let's give this a whirl. Light, smoky, bramble, cherry, a uh, bit of cooked strawberry as well as fresh strawberry in there. Smells like it's going to have a little bit of spice. Uh, it smells like it's, it uh, smells fuller bodied than it's 12.5% uh, suggests. But then I look at the colour and it's not too deep. Uh, I think it's going to be full in flavour, but maybe not heaps of tannin in there, uh, which hopefully will make it uh, a candidate for chilli. Anyway, let's we'll try it. Soft, warm cherry and berry, bit of bramble, bit of spice. Um, there's a juicy, refreshing character about it, and there's a slight smokiness in the background. I'm not sure whether it's um, oak-related or anything like that. It's a savoury, smoky finish, but uh, um, I don't get any... Well, maybe the smoke there, but um, uh, what there is there is lots of savoury, gluggable fruit. And um, these these wines have just... I haven't, they haven't, I haven't had them in the fridge, but I've had them in the place I store my wines, which is on the coolish side, and uh, certainly looking nice at that temperature. OK, well, that was a nice start. Let's try the next one. Uh, this is from Spain and it's um, Navarra. Uh, and it's called Arga and uh, so vintage Tinto Roble 2011, Tempranillo plus Cabernet and Merlot. It spent four months in oak. So um, is that uh, too long, too little? Let's have a go. Well, sometimes I look, I look at wines that have spent uh, four months in oak, and I'm a bit, I'm a bit dubious because uh, it, often it, those first four months, uh, when it picks up the wine, picks up all the flavours from the oak and doesn't benefit from the softening effect. But here, uh, it feels like it's going to be a soft, smooth, mellow wine, uh, very uh, classic Spanish. There's a little bit of uh, smoky vanilla mellowness. Uh, there's this soft, gentle fruit, um, a little bit of cooked fruit, a little bit of fresh fruit, and we're on the mulberry, strawberry. It smells good. Soft, smoky. Um, it's, it's strange because there's a softness about it, but there's a freshness and perkiness about the fruit. So the soft bits um, are the yeah. There's this like edge of vanilla, uh, uh, almost like a smooth, velvety character about the wine. But then this quite a bold, plush fruit: mulberries, strawberries, maybe even a little, little bit of orange peel in there. And there's a, a herbal character. And I think I don't know whether some of the herbal character is from the wood or maybe it's from the the Cabernet Sauvignon. But it's it's giving something like a slightly green herbal rather than herbaceous maybe a bit of fennel um i like it and um certainly at, at this this cooler temperature it's 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 looking pretty nice let's try wine number three uh so wine number three we are on uh chateau uh, grand cassin costier de nîmes la civette now i've got uh uh, fond memories of uh, Chateau Grand Cassin. There was uh, a wine shop in in London called La Vigneron, uh, and uh, this was one of their almost like a house glugger, really. Uh, and uh, they they used to have pretty good offers on it. And uh, I, I think La Civette is not their top wine, not their bottom wine. It's it's like a, a level up. Grenache and Syrah, two thousand and nine. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Well, it's got some of that. Um, herby wildness of the Garrigue, as they call it. Um, one of those wines that uh, the more you swirl it, the more, more and more comes out. Uh, it feels like it's going to have um, ripe fruit, but it's, not, it's never gone overripe. It's, never got, it's, it's not getting to the, to the jammy stage at all. Um, it feels like it's going to have a freshness about it. Um, it's two years older than the one before, but it still feels, um, if anything, it feels like a bit, a bit younger. Was this strawberry wildness and herbiness about it? Really attractive, very refreshing. Um, at, like the one before, it's, it does have a little bit of tannin, but um, uh, at this, uh, this cool temperature, it's just adding a little backbone rather than something that's just like dominating it. Uh, feels like a wine that uh, that will 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 keep opening over the course of a meal. So it may be one of those that you serve. Uh, so on the slightly cool side to start with, and then just let the warmth of the uh, the bonhomie and uh, the atmosphere uh, bring it to to a, a, a to a suitable temperature. Um, I think I like that at most temperatures. It's it's, it's a tasty wine, and uh, yes, it doesn't disappoint after my good experience of it in the 1990s. Let's try wine number four. 
Uh, we are in the Rhone now with um, uh, from the Foncalier organisation. This is Mazé de Saint, -Va Saint Victor, Côte de Rhone village, uh, Le Dune. Give it a whirl. I want to call this a Rogelet because there's uh, there's something of that um, young, fresh carbonic maceration character uh, that you get uh, that you get in Beaujolais here. Uh, but there is in that warmth and spice of the fruit behind that makes you think it's come from somewhere a little bit warmer, and it's made from um, earthier grapes than uh, than Gamay. Here, uh, I imagine it's it's Grenache plus a dollop of Syrah and, and stuff like that. But smells young, fresh, appealing, but Rogelet. <laughs> There's a spice, there's an earthiness, there's a freshness, uh, there's this juicy fruit. A slight leathery character going on in the background, but it's the herbs and spice, uh, spice not spice, um, overlaying this um, uh, core of blackberry, a uh, bit of blackcurrant, a little bit of orange peel in there too. A um, bit of plum, damson, and they, it's one of those that uh, uh, dances over your palate. Uh, and um, I imagine it would dance quite nicely over, over the lamb as well. I really am enjoying these. Um, maybe I, I, I think the uh, uh, the Grand Cassin is a slightly classier wine. This is probably this probably fits the bill that, 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 that little bit more. It's uh, it's got that fresh glug ability that uh, yes, yeah, almost, almost wine that you want in a half pint pot. Uh, but uh, I would never, of course, do that. Final wine, uh, and an interesting choice. This one, this we're in Portugal. Uh, this is the uh, TR Vista, and uh, TR stands for Tinta Rorige, uh, aka Tempranillo. Uh, it's from the Alianza Winery, yeah. Uh, and and um, do, whereabouts does, does it bear us? So yes, I always think of them as being uh, uh, doing Bairada, uh, but uh, I'm not sure whether this is all from the Bairada region uh, or whether there's a bit, little bit from the Dao region in there. But um, it just says bear us on there. Uh, Tinta Rorige with 15% barrel aged Touriga Nacional to give structure and complexity. So, uh, oldest wine here. Um, is it um, the most compatible? Well, we had the uh, Tempranillo earlier on in the uh, wine number two from Navarra. Here, it's giving some of that same uh, same strawberry character, uh, but also what, what I find here is some of that uh, ginger biscuit and some of the orange peel that I associate with Touriga Nacional. There's also a herbal character coming in. I don't know whether that's from the fruit or from the oak. Um, it smells, um, it's funny, it smells... Uh, if, uh, it smells young. Um, I mean, it's too, it, the oldest of these wines, but uh, it still smells like it's got a perky freshness about it. Juicy fruit, but then this uh, quite a whack of acidity and uh, certainly not afraid to have a little bit of tannin as well. Uh, one of those, I think that it's probably the one that uh, I'd want. I, I think it's going to do the most developing of any of these wines. Uh, I think that at this temperature, maybe it is just that little bit too cold for it. And um, so it's, uh, I, I like it as a wine, but maybe in terms of it, uh, fitting the bill for what, for what I'm looking for, uh, some of the others do it better. But um, nice set of five wines. I've got, uh, I'm just having a look at my pile on the floor. I've got eight more to do. So, but for the moment, I will love you and leave you. And I will go and um, lick my lips and start again. See you soon.